Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, all praises, honor, and glory be unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakodash. Double honors to our apostles, our elders at Great Millstone that taught us the truth, and who are ruling well through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Shalom, peace, and love to you, Akim, that are prophets and teachers who has your lives daily to push this truth. And to the rest of you believers, you Akim, you Fiyakwathim, and your children that believe in Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai and are waiting for these prophecies. All right. The return of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. And for the promises that were promised unto us as Israelites to happen. The mantra of Detroit is the same mantra of the wicked elites of the world. In which. Recently, you know, I stumbled across this this mural, you know, if you will, all right, or or you know, like a like a wall monument, you know, at this building, you know, that I was uh, delivering to, and it's um, a mural commemorating, you know, the the reconstructing or the rebuilding of the city of Detroit. You know, there was a great fire that happened in Detroit in the year of uh, 1805, which burned down the whole city. And what they had to do is they had to rebuild, you know, the city, you know, from the ashes, they had to rebuild the city. Now, the cause of the fire, you know, there's speculation around that, but ultimately they adopted a mantra you know, and that mantra is, or motto, we hope for better things, it will rise from the ashes. All right, now, ultimately, the mantra wasn't in English, all right, because uh, the people that came over here, you know, around that time, a lot of them spoke, you know, uh, Latin, all right, uh, in the mural, it also also has a section that's commemorating 1792. All right, um, and and a few other things. Um, it has a, a part that that says "Public Education Pioneer," and it shows an Edomite, you know, uh, re-educating, you know, Gad. So basically, that's a section commemorating the conquer of our people. Well, first of all. You stole their land, all right? You stole the land of our people, all right? And you murdered them, you massacred them, and destroyed them, all right? So basically, you ruined them, all right? And and, and metaphorically, you burned them down and built upon the ashes, all right, of the civilization and the society that they already had, which ultimately, you know, happened because through biblical prophecy, it said that it will happen. All right. But you did the same thing when you go into the ancient time, which I'm going to get into in a second. But I really want to uh, read this quote within the Latin, which is Spermus Meliora Resurgit Cineribus. So in English, that's where they get the translation from, you know, um, we hope for better things. It will rise from the ashes. And it's all over the uh, the, the Michigan flag, you know, or the, or the Detroit flag. All right. And, um, I have this here, which it comes from the Detroit Historical Society or, or the De Detroit Historical Society. Dot org and it's an encyclopedia of Detroit all right um it says the city seal designed by J o J o Lewis in 1827 in the middle of the flag represents the great fire that destroyed the city in 1805 two women stand in the foreground while on the left the city burns and in the background a woman weeps over the destruction, the woman on the right consoles her by gesturing to a new city that will rise in its place. 
All right, two Latin models read, Spermas milora, we hope for better things, and resurgent Cinerebus, they will rise from the ashes. All right, they will rise from the ashes. And um, hey, there's a destruction that's getting ready to happen all right, over this whole place. All right, um, the scripture speaks about, you know, it being divided into uh, um, the 10th part of the city being destroyed. All right, uh, the, the lines of confusion being broken up. Well, that's this place. All right, that's the great whore. And when it burns, you know, in the book of Revelation, the 18th chapter, it speaks about, you know, the merchants of the other nations weeping because of the destruction, you know, but ain't nobody really going to be weeping for real. All right, that's just a, a metaphor, basically speaking upon the great destruction that's going to happen. And when this place go down, ain't nobody going to say, well, look, let's rebuild it. We need to rebuild it. You know, we need to make it greater than it was before. Although the elites plan to establish, all right, uh, their new world order to really go into effect after this great war, which causes destruction around the world. They think that they're going to reemerge to reign over the world. All right. And, and to, to, to go back to having supremacy over what's left. That's not going to happen. Um. From the same website, DetroitHistorical.org, the Great Fire of 1805. On the morning of June 11, 1805, the city of Detroit caught fire and nearly everything was destroyed. The blaze is believed to have begun in or near the stables of John Harvey, the local baker. While no official cause was determined, it was rumored that the hot ashes from a pipe uh, started the fire. One of the first buildings that caught fire was a nearby barn from which flames spread quickly to other wooden structures. The, the, the population of Detroit at the time was about 600 people. Uh, the, the city lacked paid professional fire department and would not acquire the first steam engine fire truck until mid-century. Let's uh, jump down. It says, after the destruction, territorial judge Augustus Woodward created a street plan modeled after Washington, D.C., the layout of the nation's capital, which was designed by French-American architect Pierre Charles Lee Effent and featured diagonal streets that radiate radiated like the spokes of a wheel, you know, and um, when you look at the streets and how they're made, like the first layout plan, there's a lot of Freemason symbolry inside of it. But ultimately, these cities and states, or I'm sorry, but in, in particular, this particular city was set up after Washington, D.C., which Washington, D.C., when you go into the history of that, is modeled after ancient Rome. All right, it's modeled after ancient Rome. So Washington, D.C., this comes from the Habu Creek, is separated from ancient Rome by an ocean, thousands of miles and about 1,600 years but Rome dominates Washington architectural character more than that of almost any major city. A tour of Washington's most prominent landmarks makes it clear that America's city was the product of, of a deliberate, concerted effort to emulate the capital of the Roman Empire. And this is the reason why the scriptures say that they created an image to the beast. All right. Not only is the is the land, you know, structuring and the architect, you know, and the the streets. Not only is that set up after ancient Rome, all right, to uh, emulate, because that's the word that it used, right? It used the word to emulate the Roman Empire. The legislation, you know, the the political system, you know, the, the government, 
All of that is set up after ancient Rome as well. All right, the word emulate means to match or surpass a person or achievement typically by imitation, by imitation. All right. So when you look at a lot of the cities around the U.S., basically they're modeled after ancient Rome as well. So, yeah, the mantra of Detroit is the mantra of the rich elite banking families. Now, they plan on, you know, causing great calamity, and then they think that they're going to rebuild, but that's not going to happen. Now, when you go into the history of Esau, Edom, all right, when it comes down to the children of Israel, all right, they went into our land during the time of the Babylonians and they seized upon our land. You know, they burnt our temple and they seized upon our land. All right, and they saw opportunity to rebuild the desolate places. And that's the reason why the scripture says in Malachi 1 and 4, whereas Edom said we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus said Yahweh of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom Yahweh have indignation forever. So, although this applied to back then, it can also be applied to now. All right, uh, wherever Esau Edom is, all right, they're they're the border of wickedness. All right, they just their bo their border is wherever they are. So although they will build, all right, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to throw down. So although they rebuild this city, well, look, it's getting ready to be destroyed even greater than what it was destroyed before, as well as the whole city. All right, as well as the whole city. Now, there was a scripture that I quoted earlier, and I want to get it, which is the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go to 11. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from Yahweh entered into them and they stooped upon their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up into heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. In the same hour, there was a great earthquake and a tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake was slain seven thousand not literally 7,000, all right, but seven marks a number of completion, all right? So there's going to be millions that get destroyed within Babylon, all right, the, the great whore. And the remnant were frightened and grave glory unto Yahweh. So yeah, you you built this this uh, city back up, all right, from the, from the ashes, all right, but there's an even greater destruction, all right, that is looming, all right, that's going to come, all right, and, and your mantra, all right, what is that mantra, all right, um, Spiritus Melora, Resurgent Cinerebus, all right, we hope for better things, it will raise from the ashes, well, ain't nothing going to rise from these ashes but smoke, all right, smoke, that's all that's going to rise. Now, to further go into that history, all right, uh, you can go to the book of Obadiah, the first chapter, and I would say you can start really from verse one if you just want to read it. It's, just, it's not a very long book. But um, beginning from verse eight, shall I not in that day, except Yahweh even destroyed the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? And the mighty men, and thy mighty men, O Timon, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau shall be cut off by slaughter. For the violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee. All right, and thou shalt be cut off forever. And you wasn't just violent towards our people back then. All right, you're violent towards our people now. You know, in this mural, it also uh, um, 
There was also a section dedicated to 1792. All right. And the re-education of uh, the Native American Indians. All right. The Seminole Indians as well. In which after slaughtering and destroyed them, you took their children and forced them to be re-educated. You had a saying, kill the Indian and save the man. All right. You also first put them in slavery and in bondage. All right. But it didn't work out, you know, with them. And ultimately, you ended up putting Judah, Benjamin and Levi in slavery. So that's violence. All right. That's violence. Reading on, it says in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that strangers carried away captives, his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was one of them. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother and the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gates of my people in the day of their calamity, yet thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those uh, of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of Yahweh is near upon the heathen, and as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. So going from there, let's go to the book of First Ezra, the fourth chapter, and beginning at verse 45. First Ezra 4 and 45, which reads, let me start at 43. Then said he unto the king, remember thy vow which thou hast vowed to Jerusalem in the day when thou camest to thy kingdom and to send away all the vessels that were taken away out of Jerusalem which Cyrus set apart. And he vowed to destroy Babylon and send them again hither. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple which the Edomites burned. Salakia, when Judah was made desolate by the Chaldees, and now, O Lord, the king, this is that which I require and which I desire of thee. And this is the, the princely liberality proceeding from thyself. I desire, therefore, that thou make good the vow, the performance whereof which thine own mouth thou hast vowed to the king of heaven. Then Darius, the king, stood up and kissed him and wrote letters uh, for him unto all the treasurers and lieutenants and captains and governors that they should safely convey on their way both him and all those that go up with him to build Jerusalem. He wrote letters also unto the lieutenants that were in Silo, Syria, in Finnis, and unto them in Libanus, that they should bring cedar wood from Libanus unto Jerusalem and that they should build the city with him. Moreover, he wrote for all the Jews that went out of his realm up to Jewry concerning their freedom and that no officer, no ruler, no lieutenant, nor treasurer should forcibly enter into their doors and that all the countries which they had should be free without tribute and that the Edomites should give over the villages of the Jews which they held. So not only did they burn, you know, our, our, our temple, you know, our towns, you know, delivered us unto the enemies. They went and took over our land. All right. <laughs> and not only did they do it back then, they did the same thing now, you know, so they over in the land, you know, chilling. They over there chilling, <laughs> you know, and they took our identity. You know, they 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 um, are portraying themselves to be us and over there living unholy, 
are a living abominable, defiling the land and wickedness. All right, and 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 reigning <laughs> over, you know, uh, um, the world. All right, and reigning over the world. So here it is: you went into our land and you rebuilt it up, but it's to no avail. All right, because even that land over there is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction also. All right, and then guess what? Really, the true ones that are going to rebuild from the ashes, all right, it's going to be us, but we ain't going to do the building. All right, the heathens are going to do the building for us. All right, another scripture, the book of Psalms 137, and going to... Verse 7, it says, Remember, O Yahweh, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art thou to be destroyed? Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee, as thou hast reward us. And when you go into the word raise it, all right, raise doesn't mean like build up. It's R A S E. And depending on where you're reading it, at, it can be also R A Z E. But raise means to destroy utterly, all right, to completely destroy. So the payback is that this is going to happen to you, all right? Uh, the word for raise is ira, and it means to be bare, to be new, to uncover, leave destitute, to discover, empty, raise, pour out, um, emptying, to empty, to make oneself naked, pouring oneself, spreading oneself, to leave destitute, all right, to uncover. And that thermonuclear destruction is going to uncover, you know, the, the, the dust and dirt, you know, uh, from all of the, the buildings, all right, and all of the foundations that you have laid, and it's going to break all of those things up. All right, it's going to leave this land naked. All right, matter of fact, there's a scripture. There's a scripture that speaks about burning her body or something along the lines of that. Yeah, Daniel's the seventh chapter, verse 11. And I want to say that it mentions something uh, elsewhere as well. But this is Daniel 7 and 11. It says, and I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, now beheld even till the beast was slain and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. So this place is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear destruction. And as you said, all right, concerning us, all right, the scripture says that it shall be done unto you. You said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Well, the payback is, is going to be that Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh is going to do the same unto you. By way of the chariots and thermonuclear destruction, this place is going to be completely destroyed to the point of being un uninhabitable by humans. The only thing that's going to be here is the desert creatures. But the elites think that they're going to build from the ashes. All right? they, they believe that they're going to be able to reemerge all right, and, and rule over the world, over the remaining part of the world and what's left because they're deceived by the spiritual demon Satan. But it ain't going to happen like that, bro. Isaiah uh, 13 and 19, in Babylon, the glory of the of the kingdoms, the beauty of the child, the excellency shall be as when Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, anybody with a brain that has understanding of the scriptures knows that Babylon was never destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. The Persians and the Medes literally just walked in and took, took it over. All right. Just literally walked in and took it over. So it's not speaking about ancient Babylon. This is speaking about the border of wickedness, which is Esau, Edom. The capital of this new Roman Empire is America. All right. The rich elite bankers of the world rule through America, okay? It says, in Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the child, the excellency, shall be as when Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, see? Neither shall 
it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabians pitch tent there, neither shall the sh shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and the owls shall dwell there, and satire shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in her desolate houses, and the dragons in their pleasant places, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. So you can hope all you want. You know, you can hope, you know, we hope for better things. It will raise from the ashes. Well, not in this case. All right, not now. All right, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh is going to completely destroy you. All right, the great whore that is. And Esau's rule over the earth. You're not going to build all right, a better city all right, or a greater city all right, from the ashes of this place. You're not even going to rule. Once you go in those caves, all right, the next time that you come out, you're going to come out in shekels. All right, matter of fact, it states within the book of Isaiah, the 24th chapter, and going to verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high in the kings of the earth upon the earth. All right, so who comes to mind? The rich elite banking families. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days, they shall be visited. So after many days, they shall be visited, right? Who are they going to be visited by? Well, let's get it. The book of Jeremiah, the 16th chapter and the 16th verse. Behold, I will send for many fishers, except Yahweh. And they shall fish them. And after I will send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from the from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. So those hunters all right, were first fishers. All right. Right now we're fishing for the elect and Yahweh Ratazah would be a part of, you know, the hundred and forty four thousand, you know, as men that are laboring and pushing this truth. And eventually, hey, we're going to come back as mighty men with spiritual powers. And we're going to hunt. All right, we're going to hunt you. Are right, we going to know exactly where you at? All right, and we're going to bust through that door like, like um, there's like a, <laughs> like a TV series of, of bounty hunters. And basically, man, they, it's, it's, it's some jakes. But you should see how they be disrespecting the hell out of Esau in, in their house, you know, kicking through it. You know, one dude said, what you going to do? My dog is here. He said that's that same dog that ran on the couch and started watching TV when I came in. You know, we're going to bust through, you know, your how we we be a part of that, you know. And I'm just imagining in my mind, you know, busting through the doors, you know, or the walls of, you know, or even pulling the whole damn silo out of the ground. All right. Might shake it up, you know, and then <laughs> go in there and pull you out. You know, just to uh, in, as an intimidating measure. So you ain't building shit. All right. This place is getting ready to be destroyed. And afterwards, you're going into slavery. So you, you can hope all you want, you know, for better things. But you ain't going to build from these ashes that's getting ready to come. So with that, I truly hope that this lesson was edifying. All praises, honor and glory. Being to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, double honors to our apostles, our elders at Great Millstone that taught us his truth. And peace, love, and mercy being to the hopeful elect, Shalom, Ababa Ba, Kwambakiyam, Shalom.